Can you hear us? Hello, Mayowa. Good evening. Are you there? Yes, I can hear. You. All right, um, Okiki. Good evening, Kunle. Good evening. So it's it's nice to have us join this call this evening. So we are welcome to the yes, I would say more of a webinar series uh, organized by the Power Platform Business Series, where we'll be discussing things around the Power Platform. But before we go on, um, have we heard of the Power Platform before? Anybody? Hello, hello. This this is yes. not the usual lecture. Sorry, Kunle. Yes, I was going to say yes. I have. I've heard of okay. Power Platform. Okay, okay. And you've been using it for a while. No, I've not been using it um at all. So I tried a few things with Power BI. Um, okay. So I just have a kind of overview, but not really being able to use it properly. Um, the rest of the Power Platform I haven't tried at all. Okay, okay, great. All right, at least um, you are aware of um, the product and what the capabilities are. So that's that's cool. Um, Okiki, are you there? Is it loud on your end now? Yes, yes, it is. I can hear you clearly. Okay, great. So uh, how about you? Are you new to the uh, Power Platform? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not new to the um, the platform. I'm, I'm just um, trying to wrap my head around what the uh, like the the like hands on like I'm getting hands on on some I have an idea of what what it is but maybe like more hands on or I can you know gather a lot of experience as well. All right, great. Okay, so um, thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us. So here we'll be discussing things around the power platform basically, but in order to put context to whatever we are going to be discussing, we would pick case studies to work on. So. This series will be um, a continuous one, so we'll not just stop today. So every Saturday we'll be having series like this, and then we'll be that's it's um, scheduled for 5 p.m. just like we're starting today. So and um, hopefully we would have um, a number of weeks that we will be having these sessions. So I want to implore also after today we can as well be evangelist of um, this, tell people about it, people that will be interested in um, knowing how to build solutions with the Power Platform. They can always join, bring in, um, join us to learn how we can do things practically. So some of us might have taken some lessons, some um, tutorials before now, but now you're going to see how things are being done really in real time. So we are welcome once again. My name is Mohsen Hamid, so I'm going to be the moderator for this series. And um, with us is, um, yes, my, my Oga, my Oga Ibrahim Idowu, so he's um, a Microsoft certified trainer. He works so well with um, the Office apps and um, the Power Platform. So he will be the one to um, take us through this series. Yes, it's starting today, and then we're going to proceed with him while he takes us through a number of things on the Power Platform. So, but today we're starting with um, Leave application. So Leave request app. That's what we're starting with. So we'll have um, a sort of an introduction to the Power Platform, and then we'll start with that practical case study. Hopefully, we'll be able to begin that today. So um, in order not to take um, so much of our time anymore, so I'm going to hand over this time to Ibrahim, so Ibrahim can begin um, the discussion. So over to you, Ibrahim. All right. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and um, yeah, it's good to. Uh, um, to you know to continue this series we we started this series some some um like last year and um, because of um boot camps and other programs we, we had to you know we had a pause at some point we also continued when um about today i also a colleague you know continue um did um some sessions and and now that we also want to you know move ahead to um you know, continue to preach the gospel of the power platform. So without uh, much ado, we will go straight to business. And um, the business is that, so we have, um, let me see, I, th I think we have here, yeah, okay, we have quite a number of people on the call. And um, I just want to know, yeah, okay, yes, I, from the, from the, from the registration that we had here, I could see that we had many, we have many beginners and them just few intermediates. So that, what it means is that we need to, you know, we need to start from the basis. So basically is, is that um, the Power Platform allows you to build uh, simple to complex applications, right? It's a, it's a platform that allows, you know, non-developers, non I mean, 
not to professional developers to to be able to build simple applications and um, well as the case may be also to integrate with third party applications you know based on what you want to you want to build and the reason for this platform is because you know if you look if you look critically you will see that the number of um, software the number of applications that we need now is quite um are quite much and we have just few numbers of developers i mean professional developers so the implication the implication is that how do we or the question is how do we solve this problem of many applications and few professional developers you know because the barrier of the barrier of entry into building applications is quite yes i would say is is high because i'm sure for some of us on several occasions we've tried to build an application uh, or try to learn one language or the other and you see that hey to learn this to learn this language is not it's not beans you know you learn how to you all those conditioning you learn all the loops you learn all this so you know the if else you know so at some point you just get tired and you you tend to give up okay but with the low with the low code no code platform it allows you to build applications with ease at times i you know when i build application around this platform at times it, you know it sweetens me you know with the with the way i quickly turn out a process you know using the power platform you know, it, it gladdens me because hey in a, in between in, in just some uh, clicks you know you create your data source you create your form you know you add gallery and before you know it you're, you're done with a full application you know when a professional developer is still trying to you know design and do all of those things we're, we're already done right so but beyond that um let me also say that the applications that you'll be building here are not android apps application play store applications or iOS store applications right they are just they are business applications, right? There are applications that you use within a business. So, but of course, without further ado, we, we just let's just go straight to business. And um, the Power Platform has four components, like as we all know, it has Power, has Power Automate, it has Power BI, and it has a Power Virtual Agent, right? But our focus will be, I mean, for this for this time, is be basically on the Power the Power Apps and the Power Automate. Now we're going to build a simple a leave application. All of us know for for those of us that work within the corporate organization, you now have a leave request work. You know you want to go and leave. You go to the portal to apply. Now for every staff of an of an organization, they are allotted um, leave days, be it sick leave, um, unpaid time off. You know all of them already have um, assigned or allocated uh, number of days. So we're going to look at the dynamics if i want to go and leave for instance if i have 25 days or 21 days you know if i apply for 10 how many will be left after i've used exhausted that 10 so you need to be able to do additional subtraction of these leave days okay so the problem number one thing that is important for us is to know our data source now in in this during this training our primary data source will be what will be sharepoint list or lists you know, before we used to have SharePoint list as a component of SharePoint, but now Microsoft actually isolated the list. So what it means is that if you go to office.com, right, you can see list existing on its own. Okay, there are different data sources. We have SQL, we have Postgre, we have Oracle, we have we have a share, a SharePoint list. You know, we have Excel, but primarily what we the one we'll be using here is the SharePoint list, right? And so having said that. For your application that you want to build, you need to identify the columns that you would need. I mean, the fields that you would need to capture data within your application. Okay, so number one field that you'll be looking at is okay. Let me let me bring up my notepad so that we can identify fields that we will need. Let me bring up my notepad. Okay, let me know if you can see my notepad, please. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Okay, let me just do that. Okay. So you okay. want to Stop build now. a leave? Can you might, okay, fine. So leave request number one that we need the person who is going on leave. We need the person's full name. Let's say this. Okay. Number two, what do we need? We need the start date. When are you starting? Okay. Number three, what do we need? We need an end date. Number four, what else do we need? We need a reason, a justification, or uh, let's say purpose. Number five, we need leave type. 
A. And number six, what else? Uh, maybe the employee's manager. Okay, let's say the supervisor. The supervisor, yeah. The supervisor on number seven. I think that's all right. So that's uh, that's about everything that we need. So finally, I will add a status column. So it is the status that will allow us to know um, the, 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 the status of, yeah, let's say the status of, of the leave request. Okay, so aside this, we also need staff leave records. Now, what we need this for is to be able to capture the staff leave details. I mean, so for instance, if I say Ibrahim, we have to, we have to, Ibrahim has, uh, let's say for sick leave, he has uh, five days. Okay, for uh, normal vacation, vacation, let me just say, Normal, let me see. Okay, let's just see. Normal vacation. Let's say 21 days. And let's say um, paternity. Right? So let's say three days or five days. So let's just leave it as this. So what it means is that we also need to create a, a record somewhere where if, we, if I'm going on five days leave, for instance, he has to go and adjust this 21, you know, deduct the five from this. So it will now be what? It will now be 16 left, you know. I need to be able to track this. That means that what I need is, so I can state the column. Let me create the columns now. The column one that I need is the staff name. I need the person's name. The number, number two is sick leave. Let me say number of. Okay, let's say sick leave. Okay. Let's say sick leave total. Let's put it that way. Number three is let's say sick leave used. Okay. Number four is sick leave balance. You understand? So, because yes, you have a total of five days. We also need to know how many you have used and how many is left, right? So number five, we have vacation, vacation total, six, vacation used, seven, vacation balance. Number eight, we have paternity total. Number nine, we have um, Paternity, have paternity. Right oh, have paternity. Oh, Sorry, can you meet Mike? Balance. Okay, so I, I think this about it, right? This about it. So what we'll do at this point is. Um, yes, now that we have identified our columns, okay, so we go ahead to, to create, okay. So for those who are new, uh, if you go to office.com, so you must already have, you should have um, Office 365 account, okay. If you, are, if you don't, um, if you don't have a, li a licensed one, you can, you can actually create a developer version, okay. So developer versions allows you to create and each a an e5 um, license that gives an e5 license which you can use for one year right okay okay so i'll sign in here okay so um so i'll sign in here okay now so if i go here if i click on this i would see the list okay i'll see the list here so i'll click on the list Okay, great. So once I click on the list, it takes me to this place. You can see all the lists are already created, right? So I can go to, yeah, I'll go to new list. So from this new list, you can see there are, there are templates here, okay? Should you want to do anything around all of this? Employee on body, for instance, 
it's an odd cake um, process, so you can you can do template. But what we want to use is a blank list, okay? So I can just go here and copy. So it, our hours is called leave requests. So I'll go here and type it here, leave request, okay? If I need to put any description, I'll do that. But for now, I'll just leave it as it were. So I'll create. Okay, great. So these are SharePoint lists. Now, uh, for those of us that are new, SharePoint list is just, just look at it like you're looking at Excel or a table in any data source, right? It's just a table that has columns and rows, and rows right? So or by default, there's a title column that comes with it by default and is compulsory. But we'll just leave it and go ahead to create our column. So the full name, for instance, now I, I'll just create full name. Ordinarily, I would just leave it. I would have left it because by default, there's a created by column that comes with SharePoint list. We'll get to see that. So I really do not need to create it, but of course, I'll just create it for the purpose of uh, people who are new. So I'll, I'll use single line of text, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll paste it here. Now, for the single line of text, let me say that there are different types of columns that you can create, okay? which you can see here we have single line of text multi line of text and you can see that they are they are actually self-explanatory single line of text means that just um it's finite 256 255 characters but multi line of text is more than that why this one means you are creating a column that takes only number yes and no person now for this person it means that you want to be able to select somebody that is within your organization's active directory okay there's date and time there's choice and others, but for this, we're using single line of test, so I'll save this. Okay, so I'll save this, sorry, I'm trying to, okay. Okay, so I'll save this. I will go ahead to pick the, sec the start date. So I'll create this as starts, okay. I'll save it. And I'll create the end dates. The end dates, put this and um, save it. I'll create the purpose. Now, the purpose here, we can use single line of text or multiple line. That's the, the either works, but I'll just stick to single line. Right, we don't want much story. Just give us keep it simple. Then the leaf type. Now the leaf type here yeah, would. What should he use? Who can suggest to us? What do you think the leaf type should be? Hello, can somebody unmute and tell us what the leaf type should be? Um, that would be choice, I think. That's choice. Okay, that's fantastic. Now you can also use single line of text, right? So when you get to your app, when you are building your app, you can change it back to choice. There's a way you do that. So let me give you an instance. So when you have like country, countries in the world, you know, that's that's like uh, over 200 countries, so to speak, right? Now, how do you want to use choice? Does it mean that you now start copying and pasting? So you can use single line of text in that case. Then when you get to your application, you now convert it back to a drop down. okay? So, which should we use? Okay, let's do choice. Let's do choice. So leaf type, we have um, sick leaf. Okay. We have um, vacation, so speak. And we have paternity. Sorry, I didn't include maternity. Oh, but don't worry. This is just for training purpose. Sorry. So, so let's just have this and um, save. Um, yes, supervisor. Now I, I want I want to get my supervisor. So my supervisor is who? So here we're going to use person because the supervisor is somebody within my organization. So I'll use person so that I'll be able to pick the person. And finally is the status. Okay. The status. So I'll add the status can be, I'll make it single line of text so that I'll show us what I mean the other time by you know conf changing it back to a drop down. So I haven't created this. I haven't created this. Um, for those of us that are new, you can automatically generate an app from this. Okay, but before I go ahead, 
there's a title column here that I told you earlier, which is um, a compulsory field. And um, yeah, it's a compulsory field. And yeah, so we need to rename it. So what I want to rename it to is request. I want to make it request ID. So how do we do that? I can actually do that from this place, rename. But I don't want to do that here. Reason being that when I rename it here, it only renames on the surface. It doesn't rename at the back end. So I'll go to list settings, OK? I'll go to list settings. I go to list settings, um, then when I scroll down here, I'll see the title, okay? You can see it's required. So I'll go ahead to change it to what? Request, request ID. Require that this con column contains information which makes it compulsory, I'll say no, okay? Then I'll save it. Now our leave request is good to go, okay? So for those of us that are new, let me just show you how to auto generate an app from here. So when I click here, I go to Power Apps. I do create app, right? So let me say leave request application. Let me give you this name. So I click on create. So just watch the one magic. So it auto it creates our app here on the fly. So let's give it a second while it does that. So one thing that is also critical here is that you need to have a, sta a stable internet connection, okay? Else it might just be failing. And again, is that if you if you sign in, sign out of different accounts to try to generate these, at times you might have token related issues. So it might not just work, right? So these are some of the things that you need to be wary of. Okay, great. So you can see our app is generated. Leave requests, okay? So I can go here and fill this form, right? So this request ID, it should be automatically generated. But what I would do is, for now, I'm just going to manually add this. I'll say LR slash, um, LR slash, um, slash, let me just say 001, right? Full name. This full name also, we're going to, automatically pick it based on the person that is logged in, right? But of course, uh, just, okay, let me see, I want to go in future. Let me see, I'm going on the on the night, right? And I'll be back by, um, I'm back by 16, okay? The purpose, yes, to take time to relax, right? The lift type is vacation, supervisor, let me put my supervisor as, um, Mara. Okay, so I put Mara right here. Then the status is uh, pending supervisor. So this that we have done manually should be automatic, but of course, just for the purpose of just to show you that, yeah, so this record is created, we can preview it. You can edit it, right? If you edit it, you save it back, you can delete it, okay? So this is just auto-generating an app, but this is not our focus. Our focus is to be able to create an app from blank. So that takes me to, um, so we go to, so if I need to create my system, how do I go about that? So I go to make, if I want to create from blank, I go to make.powerapps.com, okay? So I haven't done this. I go to make.powerapps.com, which you can see here, okay? So you would see, start from data. You see, make your own app. You see, portal from blank. Then you see other systems that already exist. And if you also need to learn more, you can, you know, do that from here. So our focus is to be able to create from blank. So which I'll click on, and I'll call it leave request application. Or let me just put app because already we created something earlier that has that same name. So I'll do create. So this is tablets we are creating. If, if it's phone, it means that we want to create something that is, you know, in the, um, in the, yeah, portrait, just like, you know, on phone. So this does not mean that you can you can you cannot access it on your phone too. I mean, for the tablet, you can still do that. So we create.
So yeah, cool. So once you create, welcome to Palm Studio. So yeah, for, for those of us that are new again, you will see that this environment looks like what we are conversant with. It looks like Microsoft's world where you have ribbons, you know, you have you have buttons everywhere. And um, yes, yeah, this is this is where you build your application. This is where you drop all your controls and labels and the likes. OK, and on the right on the right live right here is a pin that shows the properties of anything that you select on this uh, on this um, studio on the uh, studio here. Then on the left here is where you have um, where you create screens of different types. Now, you know, you agree with me that in PowerPoint when you can create slides when you create slides is usually on the left hand here okay in power apps also you create screens right instead of slides in powerpoint also in power, power apps you write expressions there's a formula by here where you write your expressions okay so that's why some people would say power apps is a marriage or is a combination of power uh, of microsoft powerpoint and microsoft um, excel okay so i haven't said that this screen one, which comes with, which is created automatically, what I usually do is to rename it, okay? I usually rename, so I'll call it my welcome screen. I call it my welcome screen, okay? Because this is the landing page. This is where the person comes to, you know, to, that this is the first place that the person comes. Then I'll also add another screen. So this second screen we'll call, uh, this is where we have our leave request form. So I'll call it new, I'll call it leave requests. Leave requests. Let me see. New leave requests screen. Okay. Now look at the, my naming convention. I've added space between welcome and screen. I've added name space here. So it depends on you. You can decide to have it. You can decide not to have it. But of course, those who used to put spaces because of screen readers. So that they can they can be able to you know pronounce this right so you can do this and finally is our add a success screen we need the success screen for for user experience whenever a leave request is submitted it is important that you navigate to a to a to a screen where you are telling the the uh the requester that you have successfully submitted your leave request so it's important so we'll call this success what success screen you do this okay now we've created different three screens i'll start from the middle one now here what we're going to do is number one we need to connect to our sharepoint list okay we need to do what we need to connect to our sharepoint list. so i'll go to this cylinder on this on this here which is called data then i'll i'll look for i'll, I'll get my sharepoint list Okay, let me see where this is residing. Um, it's actually residing here. Okay, let me see. I need to see where this. Okay, personal. Okay. Okay, so I look for the SharePoint list here uh, for the SharePoint data source. So I click on it. Okay. So it's it's trying to fetch the different site here. So I look for that. Okay. Let me get that. Okay, let me just copy the let me just copy the URL here. So most times I usually create the list within the okay, awesome. So you you see it, so you see leave request. I think what we should have also done, we should have uh, created the other list, but of course we can always do that too. So this is what we need now that I'll connect. So while this is here, we have we have successfully connected to our list. The next thing for us to do now is to insert a form. So I'll go to insert, right? I'll go to forms. You will see edit and display. Of course, the, the, the conventions are self-explanatory. Why edit allows you to create a form where you can create a new form or an editable form. Display only give you read-only uh, experience, okay? So I'll click on edit. So now, having added the form, I'll, I'll rename it. It's very, very important. So I'll call it new 
leave request form. So I have, I have to abbreviate that, okay? It's important that you rename your form so that when you want to reference it later, you can easily you know, identify it. Now I'll connect my form to my data source. I just go here and connect it to leave request, okay? Okay, awesome. So it's created. I can adjust it so that it fits in it fits in well. I'll drop this down. I'll drop this down too. Now let me preview. Okay, now that we have done this, okay, our form is here. Okay, so um, let me select my form. Oh, something is happening. It's not selecting. Okay, I'll select it from here. So I'll select my form, okay, which you can see that is highlighted. Then I'll give it a border, a border of one so that it renders fine. Okay, so you can see it, right? You can see it. I'll push this up a bit so that to accommodate my button. Now, we do not need this attachment control, okay? We do not need this attachment control. There are two things we can do. Is that we remove it or we hide it? But I think it's easy for us to hide it. So I'll just go to visible here and I'll turn it off. So it's gone. Also, um, I want to change it from three columns to two columns. OK, so I'll go to three, change it to two. OK, so we have two columns here. Now, what else do we need to do? What else do we need to do? So let me preview it. Wow, no item to display. Why is it showing? So the reason is simple, because by default, when you add the form, the default mode is edit, which you can see here. OK, you can see edit here, which is so you need to change it back to new. So once you change it to new, you can preview it. So you can see now that the form is rendering fine. Now, what are the things that we need to do? Number one, we want to capture the person, this requester name by default. So you, you agree with me that it will be untidy for the person to start entering his or her name because already the, the user is already authenticated on the application. So what I will do is I'll click on this control here. Then where I have parent on default, I will type in a, a, a formula. Okay, I think it's locked, okay? So if you are not able to edit here, it means that it's locked. So you need to unlock it here. Unlock to change properties. So here I'll do user, open and close bracket, dot. So the moment I add a dot, it brings out email, full name and image. So these are the things that we can capture from here. So what I need is the full name. So I'll click on the full name. So you see, so it captures the name, okay? Which is okay. So I haven't done that. I'll have to make this read only. So since I have captured the person's name, I do not want a situation where I will also be able to edit it for that. So what I need to do is I will change I'll change this control display mode from display mode from this property, which is parent dot display mode. I'll change it to parent uh, display mode dot what dot view. So that I won't be able to modify it. So if I preview it now, you see it. OK, so that's sorted. The next thing that I want to do is my purpose. Yes, this purpose, I want it to be bigger than this. OK. Now, this is what I can do. Um, OK, I'll change the purpose. I'll, I'll change the height to 80 instead of 40. I'll change it to 80, OK? So it's cool now this way. What I also need to do is my status. Now, look at this status. Um, by the time I submit, it should be showing a particular status, OK? So I'll manually, I'll manually enter the status. I'll go to advance, unlock it, and change it to I change it to so I'll change it to uh, I'll change it to pending I'll change it to pending um, supervisor approval you understand so that's the way it starts so I don't need to see this particular status control as a requester. It's none of my business. It is the developer's business. You know, this data is just using it to track the status of this particular request. So what I would do here, having done that, I'll go back to IDs so that the person is not seeing it. 
for for editing or for any purpose. So this is our form now. Now what I want to do for the purpose of user experience, I want to take this supervisor above the purpose so that the supervisor will come down and sit well. So how do I do that? I go to edit fields, okay? Then I'll see all the columns that are here. So from here, I would, I'll just take my, um, where's the purpose? I'll drag the purpose, I'll drag it down. I'll drag the purpose down to, to this point. Okay, yeah. So I haven't done that. You can see now. So what it means is that I can also increase the width of my purpose so that it sits well, okay? So in terms of user experience, it's, it's always good to do this. Oh, one thing again that I also need to remove is the request ID. I do not need the request ID. The reason being that it should be it should automatically generate. So at this point, I will remove it. Okay. So I will, I will hide it rather. So um, what I need to do here for everything to sit well. Okay, don't let me hide it. So that this will sit well. Let me just do something. Let me bring it back. So. In, so that I'll just put a placeholder here. There's a in, there's something called instex. So I'll just say auto generated. Okay, I'll say auto generated. Okay, so that everything sits well. Then I'll make it. Uh, I'll disable it. Display mode. Okay. I'll unlock this. I'll say display mode dot what dot disabled. Now I'm not using view, but I'm using disabled. Okay, I'm using disabled now. I can actually use view. I can use disabled. So, which you can see here. Now, if I click inside this purpose, you will see that the text is on this is at the center. Why is that? Let us see why. So let me click on it here and go to the properties here. So you will see that is a single line of text. For you to correct that, you have to change it back to multi-line text, okay? And once you do that, you see the text, it goes up, okay? So finally, we need to insert a button, a submit button. So I click on insert button, then I'll put it here. I can put it at the center, anywhere that suits me, then I'll change it to submit, okay? I'll do a submit. Um, I'll remove radius, which I'm used to. I don't like seeing radius on this. Right, and if I need to see that, I can. I'll make it a 50 radius. But this is submit, okay? I can also rename the button if I so. Which I'll do BTN submit, submit, leave request, so to speak. Okay. So what do I want to submit? But before I go ahead, let me pause a bit. Let me let me be sure that everybody is following. Hello. Hi. Yes, I am. I am. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, but that's yeah. Okay. okay, so we're following, right? Okay, so let me go ahead. Yes, but uh, okay. uh, fast. I think you're fast. So you're uh, yeah, to... sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's because of oh, time. That you are going to send a link for the video. So sure, sure, able... sure. Yes, yeah. you, you'll be able to reference it. So because of time, we just want to manage the time, but I can understand, okay? So I also expect us to to do our own, you know, over the weekend or during the week, and let's see, give us a, a, a feedback by next week. But of course, once we're able to do this this front page, I think we can call it, um, can call it a day. So I also need to put an header. So I need to put an header here. So I'll do insert a label. And um, I'll I'll stretch it across. Okay, in this label now we'll call it a um, new leave request. Okay, so I, I would I will centralize it center. Okay, then I'll fill it. I'll give it a, a fill, which is this. I'll bold in this and increase the font to say sixteen. The text has to be white. Now, this is cool, right? So we, we go ahead. So we go, we move ahead. So the last part, at least for now, is for us to be able to submit this. So how do I do that? When I click on submit, I should be able to, you know, send this data to my to my list. So so there's a property of this submit button that is called on select. What? 
on select on select of this button what should it do i'll say submit form submit form this is the name of the form you see this is why i said you must always rename your form there are situations where you can have two three four five six forms so if you don't know the right the name of the form it, may, it might be difficult for you to select so i select this then i'll close this okay right so once i do that then the final part is for me to be able to navigate to show the user that you have successfully submitted how do i do that i'll select this form okay there's a property of this form called on success on success so i'll go to the on success property of the form so on success of this form i want it to navigate to there's a function called navigate so a navigate allows you to move from one screen to the other so navigate to where to success screen okay so having done that we can preview and now test this so my start date is um on the 16th okay and my end date is um on the 30th okay my leave type is vacation and my supervisor is uh let me type christian okay and the purpose is um traveling traveling okay let me say traveling to village let me put this then i'll do submit so voila this was successfully what completed now let's look at our list did that drop did it drop did it drop let's check wow so this dropped okay you see that request id we didn't do anything here so we'll just leave it right so we'll just look at this yeah wow yes so it, the information dropped and it were good so if i close this back we'll come back to our application so this is it uh, i think it is safe yeah so as not to to go to i think we've done quite much yeah we've created our list we've been able to create screens you know we've been able to create a new form and you could see you agree with me that this process in just less than one hour we've actually done quite a lot in terms of building an application because for you to be able to submit a loan it's something without any error so i think we'll stop here and we'll take questions thank you okay. over to you the moderator all right um, so thanks so much ibrahim for this interesting session yes uh, personally i think um, we we've had so much in a little in a short while um, how to create lists. Probably some of us might not be so much familiar with um, Microsoft's list before now. So at least we have an idea of how to create that and also creating an app. Yes, and this is an app that is very much relatable. It's something that in our various firms we would have at some point we we'll need to request for leave and probably we we'll still do it in uh, manually. So this is a way to automate this and it will be so much easy for the person in charge to quickly track a number of things. So um, thanks a lot everyone once again for joining. So while we were discussing this, probably we've noted some questions. So please, you can put those forth now. If you have any question, please, this is the time to take questions. Maybe on some fields we created, you, you want to seek clarity on why we did some things. Please let's um, put forth our questions. So um, yes, we can do that or mute yourself so we can quickly take that. Or if uh, you don't want to speak that, then uh, please you can make use of um, the chat box. You can drop your question in there and it will be read to the facilitator to address. So we await our questions in a minute or two. Please let's quickly do that. Um, hi. Good, good evening. Only okay. I, yeah, please go on. Right, so I just want to find out. Um, so before now, I had um, three uh, Azure accounts, which I'm able to use to log into office.com. So with that kind of account, I mean, I couldn't find where I would see SharePoint list. Where would I be able to go start it off to get the SharePoint list? Okay, uh, Ibrahim, did you get that? Okay. All right. Okay, so in that case, if you, if I get you clearly, you have an Azure account, right? Yes. Okay. Have you ever? Do you do you have? Um, is your email address on um, Office 365? No. 
is not okay it's not right no okay no. so you, you can confirm this way just log into office.com and log in with our account okay. you can go to office.com and log in with our account so if you are okay. able to see list and the likes then it means yes but if you can't so what it means is that you might just have to create a developer account which gives okay. you a free free year free year license each okay. uh, e5 license that you can use for development purpose only okay on on the all right thank you okay thank you Kunle. so do do we have anyone with a question anyone else with a question hi um yeah good okay. evening Evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. this is my first time in, in, in this um, the meeting. I don't know if there are uh, 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 onboarding uh, videos that can uh, make me familiar to the power apps and every other thing that's been done here. Okay, sure, yes. There, there are videos that you can actually explore and leverage. Okay? Um, what we'll do is to let's see if we can actually send to the mailbox. But um, yeah, we have quite a number of uh, guys doing, you know, doing uh, around the power plant. So, but of course, we we'll try and get to beginner, beginner um, classes. And what we can, you can also do is, um, you can also watch this video. It gives you, because I, I'm sure we actually started from the from the beginning. You can also go to Microsoft sites to see uh, paths of beginners. So, but of course, be sure that when you are here, we we'll also serve you as much as possible. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that question. Um, sorry, who else has a question? We are gradually approaching the end of today's session. So who else has a question? Please let's do put that forth. So while we expect questions, if there is any, so just um, a sort of a reminder, and um, as uh, Ibrahim just mentioned, for those of us that we joined a bit lately, we had uh, a brief introduction to what the Power Platform is. So for some of us who are still pretty much new to what the platform is and what are the possibilities within the Power Platform, so we'll get the recording of this session. Hopefully, I'm not sure when that will be sent, but uh, we'll, we'll get the recordings so we can watch that again and that would um, set that Pace that will set the basis on that for us and then hopefully we will be able to follow through on how to build the application that we just started today so um i don't know more like we don't have um, any more questions so ibrahim what do you okay uh, thank you um thank you i think today is with us yeah today was the one who took the um, the last um, business series so it's good to have you join and um Yes. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions, concerns, you know, you can just feel free to let me out to the. Okay, I think we will just find an avenue for us to, yeah, to to take your feedback. Okay, we we'll find an avenue, right? So, um, how to create the developer account? Yeah, we, we also have to. We we'll push that by the mail. You know, since we have everyone's contact, we we'll push that by the mail. It's 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 easy to to actually create. Okay, that's that's great. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, and um, yes, I acknowledge the presence of um today. It's, it's good to have you join us. Thanks a lot. Um, so uh, this continues next week, I guess, Ibrahim. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Same time. Yeah. Okay. So everyone, please let's um block that on our calendar. We can always join us every Saturday. So till when we would announce that we're taking a pause. So next week Saturday. Uh, make it a date with us again so we continue from here so let's um, endeavor to try this out from the start to where we got to today let's try our hands on it build that in our own environment too and um, as has been mentioned the details of how to create developer account will be sent via email to us so for those of us that we don't have um, an office 365 account we can always some um, leverage on that to create a developer account and once we have that uh, it is quite good that we try our hands on what has been done so far so let's have that and then also uh, how soon are we getting this recorded video yes that will get to us as soon as possible hopefully we are hopeful that probably today uh, it should get to us probably uh, but if not today, then by God's grace, we'll get it tomorrow. 
So, but that would be sent to us as soon as we are able to um, put all resources together. You know, not just the recording that we're sending, we'll get um, links to other things, the developer accounts. So that can be in a single uh, email that will forward to everybody.